Hi, good afternoon. It's uh, almost one o'clock. I've been working on your discussion board posts all morning. All of you should find uh, in your mailbox, if you post it to the discussion board, an email from me giving you suggestions and pointing out where you have participles and where you have relative clauses. I would say most of the class understands relative clauses. However, I think there's still a problem with participles, and I know why. Participles are confusing because words that end in ing or ed, as I have down here, can be a verb, can be an adjective, and could be a noun. And it's really hard sometimes to figure out what it is. Now, if you have a good handle on complete sentences, and some of you are still struggling with that, you will find, um, if you have that good knowledge, it's pretty easy to figure out what the ing word or the ed word is doing. Um, the first two sentences I have up here I wanted to show you. It's really important to understand. Waiting for a return text... Many people suffered from anxiety caused by textpotation, an affliction that is caused by the lag time between a sent message and a received one. This sentence is especially good because it ends in that uh, relative clause in that affliction is given more information by using that and is caused by the lag time between a sent text and a received one. But what's also good about this sentence is it's a participle. Now how can I tell that it's a participle and not a verb? Remember, verbs have to have subjects. Does it have a subject? Not really, because for a return text is a, is a prepositional phrase. That can't be a subject. So if it's not a subject, we know it's not a noun. Is it doing any, any real action? Is there, is there somebody in this part of the sentence that's doing action? Remember who, who is doing the action? There's nobody there doing the action. Because of that, it uh, can't be the verb. Is it a noun? Is it the subject of the sentence? Waiting for for a return text and then what happens is many people suffer from anxiety it's not a noun because the main or the excuse me the subject is many people now we have to look waiting for a text what's it describing it's describing many people what describes it's an adjective so in this case, we do have a participle. Okay? Now, let's look at this one. Used a lot in modern slang, this is basically an underhanded insult. Again, used a lot in modern slang doesn't have a subject, so it can't be a verb. It can't be a noun because it has no verb. There's a comma there. So the only thing left is it can be an adjective, which is the participle. Now we're going to get into some tricky ones. And let's use our questions again. Eating any type of delicious food can inspire emotion. What is eating doing there? Eating any type of delicious food can cause, can inspire emotion. What's the predicate of that sentence? Remember, it has subject and a predicate. It's can inspire emotion. And all we've got left is eating any type of delicious food. Now, to be a complete sentence, you have to have a noun and a predicate, a subject and a predicate. Right here, this is acting as the subject. And what we have here isn't a participle, but a gerund phrase. Again, as I said, 
It's a confusing word that ends in ed or in ing. Besides, calling anybody racist toward redheads doesn't make any sense because they're not a race. Let's look. Where's the verb? Can you see it? It's doesn't. The predicate, the whole predicate is doesn't make any sense because they're not a race. And then what's the, the subject of the sentence? Well, let's look at this. Calling somebody racist towards redheads, that's the sin, that is the subject. So it's being used as a noun, the ing word. Again, we've got a gerund phrase as your noun. Doesn't make any sense as your predicate. And then we've got a compound, or a, excuse me, a dependent clause here to make it a complex sentence. So let's go over this again, looking at each, each word here, a couple of them. It says, waiting for a return, many people suffer from anxiety caused by expectation. If we look at the verb to wait, we know that present tense is wait. I wait for my million dollars to come in the, email, in the mail. Or in the past, I waited for my million dollars to come in the mail, but it never came. Okay, so we've got the, excuse me, the present tense and the past tense. And then if it's used with a word of the form to be or to have, we've got waiting. That's a verb. I am waiting. I was waiting. I have to wait. These are all um, other ways that you use waited. In all these cases, we're talking about a verb. But silly old waiting here, because ends in ing, and this sentence here says waiting for a return text. It's being used as a modifier, as a participle. It adds more information. So you have to ask yourself, is it adding more information? Is it the noun? Okay, or is it just simply a verb in the sentence to figure this out? Now let's see. I'm going to write a sentence. Waiting for a return text from my sons drives, drives me crazy. What have I done to waiting? Waiting for a return text from my sons. You've got the verb, the predicate, drive me crazy, drives me crazy. What's the subject? It's waiting. And the rest of it is for a return text from my sons. So all of a sudden, I've taken waiting, which was used well as a participle, into a noun. Okay? And if I want to use it as a verb, I hate waiting. Oops, that's going to do it wrong. Um, I am still waiting for my younger son's reply to my text. He did get me back, but still. Okay, again, I'm using waiting, but notice it has a form of the word, of the verb to be. To be's forms are is, are. It's a really irregular verb, just it happens, so. So I've used it three different ways with waiting. What I'd like you to do is look at the word used. And try to use it three ways for me. Here it's used as a participle. See if you can turn it into, you don't have to do one thing, 
see if you turn can turn it into a gerund into where it's a noun in your sentence and it becomes the subject of your sentence and send that to me by Friday February what's February on a Friday I gotta look at my calendar 26 the month is almost over um, take a look at eating any type of delicious food or excuse me using a lot in modern slang used a lot in modern slang this is a basically underhanded assault look at used in a lot in your modern slang and look at the verb used and taking similar ideas from the actual sentence write me used as a as a uh, gerund okay use it as a gerund as a noun. Gerunds are nouns. Okay? And as I said, send it to me by Friday. I'll give you five extra bonus points. Give it a try. I mean, if you know, oh, I can't do that. Give it a try, okay? And I will uh, write you back and tell you how you're doing on it, okay? Um, if you have any other questions, you know where to find me, and you better contact me. I like it when my students talk to me or I get lonely. Bye-bye.